Stories have to be told or they die. And when they die, we can't remember who we are or why we're here. Do you know the Bible is the greatest storybook of all time? There are so many great stories in here. And within its pages, you will find true tales of mystery, romance, ooh la la, <laughs> betrayal, adventure, battle, and warfare. You'll learn about insane kings and evil queens, water from a rock and fire from heaven. That's all in the Bible. So this summer, we're going to start a brand new series starting today called Epic Bible Stories. And you could call it Old Testament Edition because that's what we're going to have time for uh, this summer. Epic Bible Stories. And I cannot wait to get started. So today I want to talk to you about big shoes to fill. Big shoes to fill. Would you turn in your Bibles, if you've got a Bible, to the very first verse. It's Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. If you've got a Bible on an app or whatever, pull out that, that tablet or smartphone, and let's get the Bible in your hands. So many times we get to the end of the day, and we're exhausted with nothing to show for it. We're pulled in so many directions, aren't we? I mean, we've got work, school, hallelujah, that just ended. We've got kids still with us. We've got extended family, never goes away. We got chores, repairs at home, and then we got all the errands. We need to go get gas, fill the car with gas before it gets to a quarter of a tank, everybody. Stress reducer. It's a life hack there. You got to pick up the groceries or order them online, however you're getting them. And then, of course, we want to have our friends. We want to have friendships. We want to have exercise. We want to have recreation together. Of course, there's church activities things that we, we do as a community and things that we do serving in the community. There's so much. How are we supposed to do all that stuff and find time for Bible reading and prayer? Well, let's look at God's example and let's see what God did with his time. So I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Thank you. That's all. Nothing else in the beginning but God. There was no night. There was no day. There was no earth. There were no people. And there were no stars in the sky. So who is this God? And trust me, this makes a very big difference in life. This God, the God that we're talking about, he is eternal. He has no beginning and no end. So in the beginning of what we know, he already was. In the beginning, God. And he has revealed himself through his creation, through what he has formed. And the Bible says that his creation, in fact, is screaming out praise to God all the time. If we're just paying attention, the mountains are rejoicing before God. He has revealed himself through his creation, through his word, God's word, the Bible. And he has revealed himself through his only son, Jesus Christ. Who is this God? In the beginning, God. Who is he? I love another one of the verses in the Bible in 1 Timothy 6, 15 to, uh, to 16 says, He is the blessed and only almighty God, the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. He alone can never die. And he lives in light so brilliant that no human could even approach him. Wow. No human eye has ever seen him nor ever will. God is light. He is almighty. He rules over everything. God is life. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. This is the foundation of everything that we believe as Christians. And this is why I wanted to start here. We haven't even got to the epic story yet. But this, this changes everything else. That God is God, we are not. He is the creator of the universe. And that is amazing. God knows then how things function at their best. He is in the best position to say how to prosper. 
He's in the best position to say how to love, how to get along, how to have peace and love. He is in the best position because he is our creator. Yeah. He defines the purpose of every living thing, and he sets the boundaries. That's our God. So before the beginning of our universe, there was nothing but God. Let's go down to verse 2. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. So if something is formless, it does not have a shape or structure. Like a good example of a formless thing would be smoke. It's, there's, there's no structure, there's no form, there's no shape. It's just chaos is, is what uh, one of the definitions is. And the earth was like that, and darkness covered the deep waters. Listen to this. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Wow. That is amazing. That, like, that's, that's information we would not just know by reading the newspaper right there. God faced, though, a problem of epic proportions. It's something that you and I have never faced. What do you create when you have nothing to work with. So we're sort of creative, and the reason we are is because we're made in the image of our creator. But literally everything we do starts with something. God started with nothing. What, what, do, you, what do you even create? What do you do? What do you form? Well, we know from what he formed, from what he created, that God values systems and seasons. He values beauty and he values structure. But here he is, and the earth had no shape. It was just smoke on the water. If you're older, <laughs> you know that reference. So God gets going, and he starts to work on one thing at a time, and then he steps back, and he takes it all in, like an artist reviewing his painting so far. Paint a little, step back. Paint a little bit more, step back. And God, in doing that, models for us a healthy rhythm of life. Work, cease. Work, cease. Full disclosure, this may not be for anyone else, but yo. <laughs> As I was writing this in the middle of the night, I felt very convicted about it. But I know God's word is truth, not my life. God's word is true, not my feelings. God's word is true, not my weaknesses. God's word is true. So I need to continually bring my life to God's word and get it lined up with the creator of the universe because that's when my life will really work. Going my way, kind of tired, all right? So day one, verse three, then God said, and I just, as not on my notes, I just have to say this. From the very first verses of Genesis, the very first verses in the Bible, the story of how it all began, we see God. In the beginning, God, that is the Father. We see the Spirit hovering over the surface of the waters, that is the Spirit. And we see the Word of God of God. Who is the word of God? Jesus. So already right here is a foreshadowing of the fact that God is three and one. Not three gods. He is three and one. Only one God. And he is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And already we've hardly got into the Bible and we already know that because it's so important what you think and know about God. And we want to have an accurate um, knowledge. Uh, of him, about him, and uh, of him personally. So God said, there's that word of God. And his word is not just a word that then starts stuff in action. His word is the action. Yeah. As he says it, it happens. And what he said is, let there be light. I don't know if he sang that Hillsong song, <laughs> but he probably, he spoke it. Let there be light, and bam, there was light. There just was. It wasn't like it got going he said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. 
wow. And again, from the very beginning, he's, sh he's showing us a little difference between what's done in the light and what's done in the dark. And he said, light is good. And then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. There it is, day one. So God, he, he's, he's like, hmm, he's gotten the most important thing done on that day. And then he said, that's enough for now. That's enough for one day. Oh, daggers to my soul. <laughs> yes, Lord, I'm listening. Yes, yes. He created, he did one thing, and he stepped back and said, that's good. That's good. Yeah, let's go with that. Light, night, and day. Done. Done for one day. Day two. But something was missing. So God created the sky to separate the waters in the clouds from the waters on the earth. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the second day. That's it. Day three. But something was missing. So God took all those waters, and he brought all those waters together, and one place and formed oceans and then he said i know what would be cool and he formed land this is my little north and central america yes thank you and i wanted to kind of go uh get some good contrast here and my uh africa all right so that's how much i was able to do in one day <laughs> Or should I say night? Okay, and we'll put that right there. And God brought all that together. He formed the, the land. He brought the, he kind of separated the waters and, and got it all organized and systematized and looking beautiful. And he formed this dry ground. And then he, he created plants and trees to produce fruit with seeds. And listen to this, because he says this over and over. And he created him to reproduce more plants and trees of the same kind. So I do not have time to get into that sermon this morning. But over and over, God said, I created it, and it is to reproduce after its kind. So those trees are not going to become tigers. Okay? That's, that's creation. That's God. That's God that set this in motion. And down in verse 12, it says, And God saw that it was good, and evening passed, and morning came, marking the third day. But something was missing. So God said, I'm going to make a sun. Not you, bud. S-O-S-O-S-U-N. Uh, Notice, items are not to scale. Um, you, uh, the sun's supposed to be a little bigger, but may, let's call it a perspective thing. Yeah, perspective, yeah. yeah it's perspective. Yeah. It's perspective. So God makes the sun, the moon, the stars, and he calls them to be light bearers. Now that's interesting and important because it looks like God created things in the wrong order. Did you notice that? Were you paying attention? He created light and dark on day one. And he created the sun, moon, and stars on day four. Interesting. How can you have light without sun? How could plants even survive? Because he made the plants before the sun, moon, and stars. That's impossible, you say. Uh-huh. That's right. God's kingdom is not dependent on the sun for light. In God's kingdom, if he says there's light, there's light. If he wants to bring in the sun four days later... No problem. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, one day, God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. We know that from the opposite end of the Bible, the back. And there's going to be a new holy city. And in Revelation 21, 23, uh, we read it recently in our Bible reading plan. As a church, we read Revelation. Verse 23, it says, And the city, listen, has no need of sun or moon. For the glory of God illuminates the city and the lamb, that's Jesus, is its light. 
back to Revelation, and God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fourth day. But something was missing. So God created the sea creatures, the fish, and filled the sky with birds. And he set them up, guess what, to produce offspring after their kind. Can you name that sea creature? Nemo. I made that. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Smaller fin on the correct side. That's right. So afterwards, kids, if you have your mask on, we'll show it to you. So God made the fish and the birds and he filled the sea, and he filled the sky, and it was so beautiful and so artistic and so um, such a system of reproduction after its own kind. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the fifth day. But something was missing. So on day six, God created every kind of animal, and guess what he did? He set them up to reproduce after their kind, all right? Who can name a farm animal here? Anybody? Cow, Cow I heard that. Awesome. You, you are ready. Donkey, I love it. Chicken, I love it. Yes, that's so good. And who, uh, what's your favorite wild animal? Maybe say it in the comments. And uh, uh, here in the, in the room, what's your favorite wild animal? Yes, yeah. Wow, my goodness, you guys are ready. Like you came knowing your favorite wild animals. This, this is awesome. I love it. But then all of creation must have come to a holy hush. Because something was still missing. But God had saved the best for last. And we'll skip down in, in chapter 1 of Genesis to verse 27. So God created human beings in his own image. Just let that sink in for a minute. God created human beings in his own image. And that's why you and I have value and dignity just as you are and just as I am. It's not based on what you've done, what you've accomplished, what your job is, what you're educated. It's not based on any of that. You have value, you have dignity because you have God's fingerprints on you. You are made in the very image of God. And that's why we value each other as well. Uh, uh, down in verse 27, going on, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And that is another whole message. <laughs> but apparently only two choices. Male and female, he created them. And then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the land, along the ground. Talk about a big to-do list that God gave us. Oh my goodness, rule the whole world. How does he expect us to rule the whole world and still have a family? Wow. But the bottom line of this message is this. When you follow in God's footsteps, you have time for what matters. When you follow in God's footsteps, you have time for what matters. Look what matters to God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. Somebody say, very good. Very good. Very good. God values rest and reflection. And he loves it when you stop and you thank God for all you've been able to accomplish. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. And then day seven. Down in chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. Now on the seventh day, God, finished, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested. And everyone gets confused about that word, but that word simply means ceased. He stopped. He did not have to. He was not tired. In fact, we know that God never sleeps or slumbers. He is he is caring for you 24-7. But he put something into the creation of the universe from the very, very beginning that on the seventh day, he does stop. Just take, take a breather, step back, 
and enjoy what's been accomplished over the past week. And so God blessed the seventh day and, and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. So it's that simple. Just follow in God's footsteps. Work hard on the most important thing each day, then knock off right before dinner. Reflect on and thank God for all the things that you did, how productive you were, and then take a full day off each week to be in community and rest in God. Just that easy. The trouble is our work and our busyness, our habits are often tied up in our identity. And so we think, if I just burn the candle at both ends, if I just do a little bit more, I'll get noticed. I'll feel approved. I'll matter more. But the truth is, you already matter so much to Jesus that he came and he fulfilled all the requirements of God's law for you, all of them. He obeyed perfectly. And God is not standing in heaven right now with his arms crossed going, when are you going to get that to-do list done so that I can approve of you? That's not how God is. Jesus already did that for you. He already completed the to-do list in God's eyes. Jesus laid down his life for you on the cross. He gave the ultimate sacrifice for you. And then he, he offered you a, an invitation. It's written down in Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. When you follow in God's footsteps, you have time for what matters. You find a rest for your souls. Your soul rests when you come to Jesus. Read his word. Pray. Listen. In prayer gathering today, we just took a minute and just were silent before God. Man, when, when you do that, you begin to find a rest for your soul, and then you go out and you work for him, and you work alongside Jesus, and you become his apprentice. If you're in the room, I'm going to ask you to stand, and if you're, if you're watching online, would you just uh, make where you are a place of prayer? And we, we want to just, have, just, uh, just pray for a moment together right now. Would you pray with me? Join me right now if you would. Father, I pray that you would help us to rest in Jesus' work. We don't have to slave to please you or to become your children. Jesus has done that work. He has fulfilled all the obligations of the law. In fact, he nailed all their accusations to the cross with him. And now, Lord, we rest in Jesus' work, knowing that as we put our faith in him, you're our Father. You're our provider. You are the one that is structuring our life if we will just let you do it. And you are always speaking. You're always uh, leading us. You're always showing us by example what to do and how to be. Lord, help us to be productive and also to get rest. Help us to have a healthy balance in our life, Lord God. Help us to work and cease, work and cease, because that's what you showed us you want us to do. And we want to prosper in the way that you have lined out for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And stay standing for a moment. Uh, I, I don't know where you are on your spiritual journey, but everyone is moving, either moving towards God or moving away from God. And today, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. I, I want to invite you to become his apprentice. Not just to think in your mind, he's cool, he's good but to actually follow him, learn from him, listen to him, be with him, work like him. It's, it's a tall order. It's not a light decision. And yet it's the best decision you could ever make to give your life to Jesus Christ and put your faith in him. 
And so I, I want to invite you today to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? You turn from your sins, all those things that you do that harm yourself and others, those things that separate you from God. Turn, do a 180 from that and turn your life over to God and let him lead. That's how you begin, and he'll take it from there. And so if, if today you would like to pray that prayer and put your faith in Jesus Christ, I, I want to pray for you. I want to coach you in a prayer. So would you all bow your heads with me? At, at home where you are, just, just quiet yourself for a moment. And if today you want to, to pray that prayer, you want to put your faith in Jesus, if you're in the room, would you just raise your hand real quick? Everyone's, everyone's looking down. No one's looking around. Would you raise your hand so I know? Yep, I, I see you already. That's so cool. Are there others today that would say, yes, I want to put my faith in Jesus? That's awesome. And I know there's some people online that are, you're, you're, you're deciding that decision today. So I'd like to coach you in a prayer. I'll lead a line. You repeat after me. But everyone, let's repeat it together. Everyone in the room, everyone where you're watching at home, let's all support each other and, and say this out loud. Say after me, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you starting today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And if you prayed that prayer, we just say congratulations. That is the best thing you could have done. And I, I really would like to know that. So whether you're here in the room or you're watching online, would you go to the website, just click on that Connect card. And uh, at the bottom of the Connect card, there's a little teeny box that says, I prayed that prayer today. I made that decision to follow Jesus today. If you mark that, I will know, and I'll just send you an email. I, I just want to encourage you just a little bit, all right? So let's do that today. Uh, thank you for participating, everybody. Hey. Wow. What a day. I, I just want to call something out, and this is a little off script, but our pastor, Pastor Garen, is very intentional. And he knew there would be kids in the room today. And so he stayed up and made visuals so that your kids could look. I, I love you. And, and more than we see it, God sees your heart. And you have an amazing heart. Sorry. I love you. Sorry. Okay. Woo! And I'm back. Um, okay. Um, whew. You can go to the website. I think it says, if you have needs, you, we, we want to pray for you. We are a church that prays together. We have been praying for you faithfully. As you go to the website, you can fill out a prayer request. We will pray for you, I promise. It, it's who we are. It's what we do. Um, actually, even in other times of the day, we will text each other if stuff is up. So we are praying. I want you to know that. Also, uh, right now, if you're online, you can take your kids over to the YouTube channel and watch the YouTube video. It is awesome. It is a great opportunity for your kids to worship God and have a service for them. We're actually going to play it right here. So if your kids can make it wearing a mask for another 15, 20 minutes, stay right here. We're going to play that for you. It's going to be awesome. We love you. We are so glad to be in the house with you uh, and online in your house. Thank you. It is great. Have a great day. We will see you next week here or there. Be blessed.